wake up, Midjourney will never be the same again. There's a lot to go over, so let's get started. Midjourney just introduced the personalization feature. They've been working on this for a while, but basically the bot will take into account your personal preferences when it creates a generation. Let me show you a quick example and then I'll teach you how to do this yourself. If you were to normally prompt for Batman in version 6, you might get something like this generation. And this is on seed 4689. But if you were to type dash dash P at the end of your prompt, Midjourney will personalize it for you. And this is a generation you might see. Well, you won't be able to see it. I'll see it because that is my personalization code right there. W-O-M-L-1-A-I. That happens to be my code, and if you use that in your prompt, you would get images that look like this. Specifically that code. When you type dash dash P at the end of your prompt, your code will appear. Personalization will be turned off by default, but you can turn it on inside of your settings. Hit forward slash settings, and we can find personalization right here. Alternatively, like I said, you can add dash dash P at the end of your prompts on your own. Let's do a quick live example. If we were to imagine an aerial view of a pirate ship festival cruise and we hit enter, Midjourney is going to run that normally. Sure, everything makes sense. But if we were to add dash dash p at the end of the prompt, now Midjourney is going to run it with our personalization code. If you don't want to input that parameter every time, again you can go into your settings and click personalization that will add your code to the end of all of your prompts. Here's what the cruise might look like on its own, and here's what it looks like with my personalization code. Now, how do you develop this code for yourself? Let me show you. First, you're going to need to go to the Midjourney website. Right now, the model learns in two different ways. Your personal style will depend on which images you like on the Explore page, as well as what images you choose in the rank pairs. The Midjourney team says you need around 200 images chosen for the bot to develop your personal preference. At the top here, I've actually ranked 8,703, so I think the bot has gotten to know me pretty well. And all you're gonna do, simply choose left or right, which one do you like better? And I want you to keep in mind, it's not necessarily what the better picture is, it really is just what do you prefer. <laughs> I am a sucker for video game graphics, so I'm gonna go with the right side here. And then something like this might be a lot more difficult for you. But again, it is just a personal preference, so don't sweat it too much. Which do you like better, the left or the right? And just a little shortcut for you, you can use the one or two keys on your keyboard to choose between the left and the right, one being the left, two being the right. I chose the left side. Ooh, this is a tough one. I'm going to go with the right side, so I'm going to click number two. And something that you should be aware of, you can always hit the skip button. If you aren't sure which of the two you like, or you don't like either of them, don't feel like you're forced to pick. Remember, you can just hit skip. And if you make these selections enough times, Midjourney is going to start to learn what you like. And then when you write a short prompt and you don't leave a lot in the description, Midjourney can kind of fill in that blank space for you, specifically cater to what you would prefer. Now, once you have your code developed, I want to show you a way to test it. You're going to write your prompt. Again, if you want to test it, I think you should start with something simple so you can really see the effects of what Midjourney does behind the scenes. Then we're going to put a curly bracket followed by a comma. Now is where we're going to input the new parameter dash dash p and close that with a curly bracket. What that prompt is going to generate is Neon Batman with and without dash dash p. But we're not done. If you really want to see the effects, we're going to lock in a seed number. Dash dash seed, and then you can type random numbers on your keyboard. You just have to pick a number between 1 and 4 billion. Boom. There we go. When you hit enter, Midjourney is going to ask if you want to develop these two prompts. We'll hit yes. Again, you can hit show prompts if you aren't sure what happened. So we have Neon Batman on this seed and Neon Batman dash dash p on that seed. So there's our prompt, and that's pretty much what I would expect from Midjourney at this point. But take a look at what personalization did to the generation. Oh my god, isn't that amazing? <laughs> like look at number two, that is so cool. And all I needed was that code in the prompt. That is my code. Again, you can use that in your prompt, and you will get a similar vibe to what I prefer. <laughs> May that be a gift from me to you. 
and feel free to leave your codes in the comments below. I would love to explore them as well. But there is one more important thing that you should know about. You can actually control the strength of this personalization. We can do that by using dash dash s, that is the stylized value. It goes from a range between 0 and 1000. The default is 100. Let's go through this example. Here is a superhero dog on my style code on this C number with stylized 0. That means that there is no strength to the personalization and this is what you would expect to see for a mid journey for just a regular superhero dog. Okay, that's fine. But let's raise the stylized value a little bit. Let's raise the strength of my code. There it is at stylized 10 and maybe you can just see a hint of my preference there, but I promise you it's going to get a lot stronger. Here it is at 20 and I would say number one and number three are a little more reminiscent of what I would expect from this new mid journey feature. But take a look at stylized 50 on the same seed number. It's definitely starting to incorporate my preferences to say the least. Now I would say I'm not completely in love with my preferences. I feel like my style and my design choices vary from day to day. But overall, if you rank enough images, if you let Midjourney get to know you, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with what the bot can learn from you. Trust the process, trust the system, trust the team. And remember, this is off by default. You don't have to use this feature. This is just a way to write short prompts and still get what you want to see. Here's our superhero dog at no stylized value, which means it's at the default of 100. And these are okay. I guess I like number four, the golden hour. That's pretty cool. So my personal recommendation is to use a stylized value, the strength of your code somewhere between 50 and 200. You do not need to go much higher. Here it is at 200 and we're definitely starting to get that vintage vibe. I think that's what you'd call it. But watch as we raise the value on the seed number. It's really not going to change that much. Like here it is at 300. Did that do anything? Are those not the exact same pictures? A quick back and forth. Pretty similar. And I think that's how you can test that the strength of your code. It really doesn't make that big of a difference after a certain point. Certainly between 10 and 50 all the way up to 200. But as we raise it above 200 you can refer to it as maybe diminishing returns. Here it is at 400, 500, 600. Now I actually like these a lot. As you'll see, I upscaled one, three, and four. But I think the point is that maybe I just got lucky with these and I could have easily seen these same images in 200, 300, etc., etc. The higher the stylized value, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. As you can see, it's 700, 800, 900, although I do really like number four here. I think that's beautiful. And 1000 again. OK, I like this a lot. Feel free to raise the strength of your personalization code. Just try to remember it might not matter that much. OK, wait, there's one more thing you might want to know about this. Please experiment with the chaos value when your code is enabled. It actually works pretty well. I mean, I'm not that confident in saying that, but let me show you some examples. Here we have a portrait of an Instagram model, Chaos 3. Okay, that's something we might expect from this type of prompt. Here it is at Chaos 7, and look at number 3 here. I mean, that's an amazing picture. I didn't ask for any of these details, but somehow Midjourney knew that I would like this. I think that's rather impressive if I do say so myself. And maybe I can point out in the future that these personalization codes, they might change. The algorithm might change. When you rank images, you might change your own code. I just want to say, don't get too attached to what you see here. Midjourney is a constant evolving process and the team just wants you to have fun with the tools available to you. Please don't get too attached to any specific style. If there are any updates to this feature, I will be the first to tell you about it. Here's the prompt at Chaos 12. All right, now this would be normally the limit of what I would suggest for chaos values. But watch what happens when we keep going. At chaos 20, we can still get some beautiful images. And there's even a guy in number four who would have thought. I like number three a lot. At chaos 40, I can't believe we get something that resembles our prompt. <laughs> Look how beautiful number four is. I think a high chaos value might be something that you want to explore as well. Chaos 60 could still work. These are great. And Chaos 100, I think, still turned out pretty well. There are a couple more things I want to mention in this video with regards to this new feature. Stick around if you want to learn more. And if you want to learn everything else about Midjourney, you can check out my Midjourney beginner course in the description below. OK, the first thing is that your aspect ratio can actually change the idea of this preference quite a bit. 
at least in my initial testing. Here is a portrait of a penguin in a one by one square ratio. Okay, these are pretty cool. I like what Midjourney did with it. Turns out Midjourney got my preferences correct. In two by three, I would say the same thing. These are pretty similar to the square, but look what happens when we use a wider ratio. The painterly vibe sort of disappears. What's up with that? Why would that happen? I don't really know. Maybe you can let me know what your ideas and your theories are, but keep in mind that the aspect ratio might change your generation quite a bit. Now, I know I mentioned that this feature works really well for short prompts, but it actually does quite a bit to longer prompts as well, and this is not something I expected. So this prompt here, let's look at a stunning stained glass monument of a king and queen protecting their castle. Rich hand-woven architecture in a surreal atmosphere on that specific seed number. That's what we get. Okay, maybe that's not the best prompt. Maybe these generations, I don't know, number four isn't bad, but let's just... I wouldn't hang these on my wall, so to speak. But look what happens when we use that same prompt, same seed number with my code. We get these, and these are quite different, like extremely different. It's much more vibey, more painterly. Again, it's hard to put into words because this is my preference over 8,000 ranked images. It's hard to describe, but remember that even in a longer prompt, your style code might make a big difference. And maybe the last thing that you need to know about is that your personal code also works with style raw. Take a look at this prompt. A cute dog with big eyes sitting next to a guardian king cobra snake. Number two is such a funny picture, and I'm sorry, I didn't want... <laughs> I wasn't expecting this specific look to come through. I didn't want the dog to look like it was about to be eaten. But when we put our code or dash dash P into the prompt, Style Rock can also tap into our preferences. And we get these more faded looks. I don't know, I like these a lot. Like look how cute these are. Oh, that's just the greatest. And then I do have to point out that your personal codes do not work with Niji Journey at this time. And over on the Mid Journey website, you can find the personalization option here in your settings. There's everything that you need to know about Mid Journey's newest feature. Get to ranking those pairs and perhaps share your code with me. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.